Call 1-800-679-0969. Your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free. 1-800-679-0969. That's 1-800-679-0969. Acadian Ambulance presents the National EMT Academy. That's right, an academy where you can learn to become an EMT and make a difference every day. EMT is Emergency Medical Technician, the entry-level position for emergency medical help. Teaching is both online and classroom and can be done while you're still working your other job. This is an accredited program. Get ready by registering for an information session. Go to nationalemsacademy.com. The Flood Protection Authority operates one of the largest flood protection systems in the world. Upgraded levees, modern flood walls, floodgates, and a massive surge barrier defend the greater New Orleans region from hurricanes and storms. Join us in protecting your homes, families, and businesses by being prepared before a major storm approaches with these steps. Floodproof your home, have supplies ready, make an evacuation plan, and be properly insured. For more flood protection information, visit our website at floodauthority.org. Come on down to the Silver Slipper. Hi, this is John from the Silver Slipper, and I just want to tell you about a very special promotion we're doing here at the Slipper. Now, when you play here any day in July, August, and September, you'll be earning entries to win a brand new portable Yeti cooler that evening at 7 p.m. That's right, we're giving away a Yeti roadie cooler every night for three consecutive months. So come on down to the Slipper and earn your chance to win a Yeti cooler every night. We're on the beach here in Hancock County, Silver Slipper Casino. We are proud to be your host on the coast. Good time at the Silver Slipper. Experience downtown New Orleans. For generations, starting with Historic Canal Street, downtown has served as the place for shopping, entertainment, dining, culture, and weekend getaways. As we work through this recovery together, experience the energy of downtown New Orleans South Market, Riverwalk, Canal Place, the Arts District, the Warehouse District, and Canal Street. We cannot wait to see you. For more information on downtown's unique collection of businesses and services, visit downtownnola.com. Experience the life. Sponsored by the Downtown Development District. At Metairie Bank, we connect with you through personal service and safe technology. Our team is here to answer your financial questions, set up your account, help secure loans, and more. Through our online and mobile banking app, you can deposit checks, pay bills, transfer funds with just a few clicks. Chat with one of our personal bankers today or open your account online for secure services delivered your way. We connect with you. Metairie Bank. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. J&J has protected Louisiana homes and businesses for over 50 years. Call them today, make the pets go away. J&J, exterminating. Yeah. Cajun Cannon here for the amazing people over at Mortgage Financial Services at 225-293-6855. My man Rick Priest and his team are the one-stop shop you need for all things mortgage. Whether your dream is to own your first house or if your dream is to stop making rent payments that just pay off your landlord's house and if your dream is to just lower your monthly mortgage payment with a refi, then Mortgage Financial Services is the company you need. They are making dreams come true every day. And today is the day they can make your dreams come true too. Now is the time to take advantage of the historic low rates and stop making your landlord richer. Houses in this market are selling fast and nothing makes you a more powerful buyer than pre-approved. So give Rick and his team at Mortgage Financial Services a call at 225-293-6855. That's 225-293-6855. Or visit them online at mortgagefinancial.com and tell them Bobby sent you. You're listening to Anthony Lima on CBS Sports Radio. All right, welcome back to the show. Still have 40 minutes left uh, after this show on CBS Sports Radio. Uh, You will be joined by none other than Sean Pendergast. Uh, Very excited about that. Maybe he can explain what the hell is going on with certain somebody in that lineup. (laughs) I couldn't think of his name. Not Correa. Come on, Altuve. That's it. My God. He'll do a better job of having a grasp on how uh, Altuve has fallen all the way, what, down to seven in that order? He's committing errors. He's all over the place. Base running gaffes. 
and the rest of the major leagues absolutely loving every minute of it. Uh, so I'm sure we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll get back to the phone calls next segment. Uh, but first, we got to go out to the hotline. Ben Kerchival covers college football and more for CBS Sports. Any relation to the legend in West Virginia, Hoppy? Uh, yep. Yeah. Good. Well, that's what I was wondering. Uh, yeah. Remember covering uh, West Virginia football. I was up there all the time, and there was the great, iconic Hoppy Kerchival. Anyway, Ben, any chance that this petition going on right now uh, with Justin Fields and others is going to sway the Big Ten to get back on the football field? Uh, uh, you'll never hear me say it's a zero, but you got me at like a point zero 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 zero. maybe throw in another zero and then a one. I mean, it's, it would take a medical breakthrough that we have not seen yet, and it would have to happen tomorrow for the Big Ten to reverse course on its petition to a shoe and play in the spring. Yeah, online petitions don't typically uh, end up being very effective. <laughs> I found that in my yeah. walks of life. Uh, but this one's interesting because parents, players, and obviously the fans and the donors – are livid about these yeah. decisions that have come down from the Big Ten and then, of course, the Pac-12 that followed suit. How did we get here? How did we get to this point where they say they're getting the same information that the SEC and the Big 12 are getting, but their determinations were vastly different? Well, if they're, if they're getting the same information, I think that would probably be news to a lot of other people because, they, you know, they're all dealing with different medical boards. And, and when you're dealing with different medical boards and you're dealing with different interpretations of it, um, you know, and you're not always sharing that information, there's not a lot of transparency uh, from conference to conference. I, I, the most transparent has been the Pac-12 in all of this. They, either, they at least released kind of sort of their findings on, on all of this. But the reason why the Big Ten is where it is right now, for the, the long and short of it is that they really lacked – a, a consistent unified message on this and this can be traced back to you know different presidents and chancellors wanted different things okay well that, that's understandable you're never going to get a hundred percent on all of this but when you make a decision typically these these decisions are unanimous they have to be unanimous it, you, you're either all in on something or you're all in on another thing uh in this case you're all in on either playing or, or not playing um and so so you have to have unification on that, and then you have to have unification on, on sort of how you're going about presenting all of this. But just a week before they decided to postpone football, they released their schedule. Okay, well, so, they, and look, I, I have as many questions as much as the next person about whether you can actually play football this year. But if you're going to release your schedule and make plans, what changed in a week? And I, I think that is very understandably what players want to know, what coaches want to know, what those parents want to know. I think that is really where the Big Ten started to go astray is suddenly the message from one week to the next became drastically different. Well, what is the story there in the Big Ten where Jim Delaney was a powerful figure? They get a new commissioner that comes in, and everything I've always seen in the Big Ten is that no decisions are made without Ohio State or Michigan signing off on those. We saw a report earlier in the week. Dan Patrick said there was a there was like a 12 to two vote, and uh, you know was in favor of ending the season, and that Ohio State was one of those that was in favor of ending the decision. And since then, it would sound as if Ohio State was not on board. Well, I, look, I I can't speak to Dan's sources. Mm -hmm. I mean, whatever whatever he's reporting. Whatever he's hearing is, is different from us. I, I can tell you that from our end, uh, we knew there was a lot of hesitancy. Um, you know, it wasn't always clear from exactly who. Um, but the whole idea of there being a split within the conference is, is absolutely true. But again, when you have to make a decision, very, very rarely, if ever, is it majority rules if you you know everyone all has to be all in on one thing or the other so the only thing that i can surmise is that you know they they decided okay we're we're gonna we're gonna call this off but i don't think everyone was really happy about it but then what you know what you're seeing as the fallout of all of this is you know there's a feeling of even though you can't really do anything about it 
the posturing of the strength in numbers to make it to have that visual of really caring about playing you know that's that's what that's the backfiring part of it right now all right ben kirchhoff will join us on the hotline so last night buried in the sea of network news at like midnight the NCAA's yeah. chief medical officer comes out of hiding, Dr. Brian Hainline, and says, with testing as it is right now, that there's no way that they could proceed with sports. First of all, does that decision have any ramifications whatsoever on the SEC and the Big 12? Those words from the chief medical officer. And what about this new saliva test that the NBA helped spearhead, I think with Yale, uh, that yeah. could help the testing? Yeah. So. The, the FBS postseason, the every, that's privatized for them. So it's not part of the NCAA. So when the NCAA cancels uh, fall championships for Division Three, Division Two, II, Division One, FCS, that, that's for everyone who gets their, their championship uh, through the NCAA, which is why the NCAA Division One championship is for the FCS and not the FBS. So that would have no bearing on what the power conferences want to do or any of the other Division One FBS uh, conferences. That's why you're seeing all of the sort of categorization of them doing their own things. As far as the saliva test goes, obviously this is a, a very, very encouraging sign. It's really, it's the kind of advancement that I think a lot of presidents, chancellors, and conference commissioners were hoping for like back in May. You know, that's why you had a lot of the, the kicking of the can down the road was they wanted to see if there was going to be some kind of advancement in testing that would have a quicker turnaround, uh, be not quite as invasive, be uh, inexpensive, be available, and uh, be accurate. So those are all great things as far as this saliva test is concerned. It's been approved by the FDA, which is a good start, but it's, it's not implemented yet on a, on a wide basis. So again, this is a positive step in, in a direction, but it's not, it's not like it's gonna be available tomorrow. I know there have been some other reporters always accused of not wanting sports to succeed, but that have, that have said, and we're talking big time plugged in guys are saying they still don't think that the SEC and Big 12 are really going to get off the ground. What would it take for them to change? What would it take for them uh, to move? What different information would they need to then stop everything in its tracks so that we have zero college football this year? So it's not really about, at this, at this juncture, it is not whether they're going to get something new that's going to change their mind. The more likely scenario is what is going to happen when the season starts and the disruptions inevitably occur uh the cases spike i mean you just saw on saturday oklahoma they they had zero cases for a while they took a break for about a week uh some some uh, students came back on campus suddenly they have nine cases it just it very easily shows you how quickly this thing can spread so you would have to have as you proceed with this you would have to have enough of a disruption for them to say, you know what, we, we can't do this. So for me, it's not when you start, it's really how it proceeds from that point on. All right, Ben. Well, I appreciate uh, all your perspective today. Hopefully, hopefully we can see some football and that it can be safe and we can get back to something normal in that world because it has been chaotic, to say the least, over the past few weeks. Thanks, man. Yep. Yeah, appreciate it. Take care. All right, there he is, Ben Kirchival. All right, we'll have some reaction to that uh, when we come back. And last chance to get on board, 855-212-4CBS-4227. What do you think of this petition? Should it matter at all that the players and the players' parents want to play? Should they be allowed to make that decision, or should they continue to have to listen to what their conference commissioner is telling them? 855-212-4CBS, but standing by live right now with the update. So excited. Never got a chance to work with the great Erica Herskowitz. She's standing by live. CBS Sports Radio. Sports Flash.
Well, that is a lot to live up to, so let's make it good. <laughs> In the latest step to a remarkable recovery, Washington quarterback Alex Smith was activated off the physically unable to perform list today. Smith making his way back after uh, breaking his right leg in two places during that game almost two years ago. The move means Smith will be allowed to participate in Washington's padded practice when the team moves into that phase of training camp on Tuesday. With injuries starting to mount, the Jets made a move today coming to terms with wide receiver Chris Hogan, the 32-year-old New Jersey native, a two-time Super Bowl champ with the Patriots, will be joining his fourth AFC East team. The Stanley Cup playoffs continue today. Five games on tap, starting with the Islanders facing off against the Capitals in Game 3 of their Eastern Conference opening round series. The Isles lead the best of seven set two games to none. Right now, second period, the Isles and Caps are tied at one. Anders Lee put the Isles on the board in the first before the Caps tied things up on a power play goal from Evgeny Kuznetsov early in the second. Coming up, the Stars will look to even up their series at two games apiece when they skate against the Flames in Game 4 of their first round series in Edmonton today. And it's an off day for the NBA before the opening round of the NBA playoffs begins tomorrow in Orlando. Now to baseball, where Zach Wheeler is facing his former team for the first time as the Mets host the Phillies today at Citizens Bank Park. Bottom one, the Phillies lead the Mets 1-0. Reese Hoskins started things off for the Phillies with an RBI single off Rick Porcello in the first inning. Taking a quick check of the rest of the scoreboard right now in the National League. Bottom of the first, the Braves and Marlins are scoreless. In the American League, bottom of the first, the Indians lead the Tigers 1-0. And interleague play going on this afternoon. Bottom first, it is the Nationals leading the Orioles 3-zip. Meanwhile, Ohio State quarterback Justin Fields started a petition requesting the Big Ten to immediately reinstate the 2020 football season. A petition that has more than 47,000 signatures as of 1 o'clock Eastern this afternoon. The petition follows the Big Ten's decision to postpone the season based on medical advice and a vote from the conference's presidents and chancellors. I'm Erica Herskowitz. DA is waking up early to wake you up. It's Damon Amendolara, morning 6 to 10 Eastern, only on CBS Sports. Radio.